Today is April the 3rd, 2022. Joshua Pryor gives a sermon entitled, Be Resolute, Part 3. Be Resolute, Part 3. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the men of old gained approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that that which is seen was not made out of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. God testifying about his gifts through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. And the first young fellow, Abel, was the sacrifice found within from the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God, slain. Now to the next faithful man. By faith Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. And he was not found because God took him up. For he obtained the witness that before his being taken up he was pleasing to God. And without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is rewarder of those who seek him. The second thing learned to keep yourself resolute in your faith is to be like Enoch and walk with God. Enter through the fires of first love into that place called paradise to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Revelation chapter 2, the church of Ephesus. The fires of first love. Aren't they good fires? They're good when you get through them. Because the cherubim is there swinging that sword and he's looking at your face saying, are you a shadow of your father above? Are you carrying that face of the lion? Are you carrying the face of the servant? Are you carrying the face of the man? Are you carrying the face of the eagle? Next. Verse 7, by faith, Noah being warned by God about things not yet seen. In holy fear or in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Noah, the guy who condemned the world. How did he condemn the world? He fashioned his life according to the cross. Every board of that ark was made standard, a square board, all according to the cross of Jesus Christ. And when you step into that cross and the world is crucified to you and you are crucified to the world, you enter a beautiful thing called rest, which I forgot to mention last week is Noah's name, rest. So to begin in rest for the new creation to come forth. For God began in rest, so must you begin in rest. That's why it is important for you for you to have the Lord's day. And the Lord's day is not sitting at home twiddling your thumbs. The Lord's day is forsaking your ways, seeking his rest, being intentional about that. Because that is how you're going to begin setting into time the new creation being that God has put you in. Next, young fella, old fella, I should say. By faith, verse 8, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise for he was looking for the city which has foundations whose architect and builder is God now we come to the third place of being resolute or not the third place but part three being resolute to be like Abraham if we remember from the first session we talked we gave four steps that Abraham went through to bring his promise into being. 
The first one is have the promise. The second one was contemplating your body in the weakness thereof, therefore being past death, because he was not able to produce the promise because he was an old man and his wife also. The, second, the third thing he did was give glory to God. How do you give glory to God? By letting God be God. What does God do? He brings dead things to life and he causes things that are not to come into being. Something from nothing and bringing dead things to life. And the fourth thing was performance. Because God is about performing on the earth. In the song tonight, we sang what? That we are to be to the praise of his glory. How does he get it glory? By he takes this little man called us and he makes us into his image. That makes him to be magnified, to be praised, because every man knows our futility in life, our weakness. That's why David said, what is man that you were mindful of him? God gets glory when you start shifting into his image, taking on his character. So now, Abraham, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. So the first part was about the promise within, the promise of Isaac, the promise of Jesus Christ. But now we relate this promise to something on the outside, a land of promise. So we got two places of promise both within ourselves and on the outside of ourselves. God has two places of promise for each of you guys, on the inside of yourself and on the outside of yourself. And they both are important for you to become the image of God in the earth. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord, yod heh vav heh said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you and I will make you a great nation. Notice he didn't say go over to this land over here and this is what exactly it looks like. He says go forth, leave, leave your father's house, leave the place of your relatives, leave your comfortable, comfortable positions in life. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and the ones who curse you. I will also curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Your promise that God gives you is not just about you. Every God-given promise is about generations. It is about your children and the people around you. If you think your promise of God is just a new job, you are sorely mistaken because the promise of the new job is not about the new job. It is about the future of your inheritance, of your children's and your children's children. The landmark of the tithe, what is about that? It is about the tithe remains in the stump. This is from Joe Wiley. So if you cut the tree, the tree will regrow from the stump. All your parents' labor, all your forefathers' labor is because they have they have sowed and now you can reap and call forth those blessings from your grandfather and your father your predicament now if you're blessed now it is not just because of you it is because of your forefather somewhere some way down the line they started sowing and God said now I'm going to let that which is chopped down be brought forth to life because God got to get the glory and when you see the, the trees the forest burned down plan it over everything else he's going to say let there be life and goodness is going to spring up don't think the blessings of your life are because of your choices alone no many of you have been blessed because god has sent forth someone who has been faithful before you it keeps you from falling into pride because remember abraham didn't get to where he was if he didn't have abel if he didn't have enoch if he didn't have noah Mm. so abraham 
called out of his father's house and all of his relatives to be grow up, to be a father of many nations, to have his children, Jacob and Isaac, be heirs according to the same promise. And you also heirs according to that same promise. That is a blessing. But what is the call? What is the call to go into an unknown land? Now we talked about the promise within. Christ in you. This is the promise within. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Christ in you the hope of glory. This is this promise within you. But there's also a promised land on the outside of you. What does that look like to you? I have no clue, but it's something. It could be a coffee company. It could be a family. It could be a bride from Brazil. That could be a part of your promise. But how is that supposed to interact with the promise within you? Well, how did it interact with Abram in Abraham's life? It says he was an alien. He was a foreigner in the land. He wasn't set around himself with friends and family. No, he was stuck there. He had to fight the king, the evil kings around them. He had to be called out. He had to be a foreigner. Even Lot was a bit of a drag on his life. God is calling you from that place of rest to begin to birth that promise. And what does he use? He uses the promise of the world around you. Not the fallen world, but of what world to come? The heavenly world. Let's read in Hebrews chapter 11 and we'll see it hopefully a little bit clearer. Jesus, hallelujah. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed. Obeyed. Part of the hard part about Christianity is sometimes we got to obey, guys. It's not a thing that we just do and we just cover it with the blood and say, okay, let's go on, even though I do that sometimes because I'm spoiled. God really loves me. He really loves you guys too. But you got to keep going. At some point, you have to obey that call. And you're not going to know all the details, but that's okay. You have to obey that call. You have to obey that call in your life. You have to be obedient to the promise within so Christ can be birthed in and through you. I know it's scary. Sure, Abraham is scared. But he had, he wanted to receive his inheritance, not only from his, for himself, but for Isaac and Jacob and for the nations of the earth. So by faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise. As in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. Well, I, I just thought it said that he was in the land of promise. That's what it said, right? He was in the land of promise. By faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise. Though on the outside, he was in the land that was promised to him. But from his point of view, he kept it a land foreign to himself. He didn't say this is the land of promise even though it was a land of promise. See, in your life, you may think, well, I'm not in the land of promise, but God wants you to give you a mystery. And the mystery is that even though you're in a physical land that is called your promise, it should be a land of mystery to you. Because when you put yourself in a place alien to it, a place foreign to it, a place unknown, well, that forces something inside of you to unlock. That forces that something inside of you to, to open up. Because through many tribulations you enter, you possess that promise. That's why he says tribulation and distress upon every soul that does disobedience. God is trying to make you obedient through the sufferings of that land. If you look at Abraham in that land, he suffered persecution. He suffered grief. I mean, he had to go fight into battle with 300 men against five kings. But what did he receive? The blessings of Melchizedek. What did he receive? The promise that his son will be a father of many nations. But it wasn't all peaches and cream at that point. He had to press on belief. Being a foreigner, he made some mistakes. That's okay. You're going to make a lot of mistakes too. But that's okay. Because you're a foreigner. God's keeping you in that place. Pressuring you. 
causing tribulations, allowing tribulations, even though you know you're in the exact position that God wants you to be in. I liked what Ian Clayton said. He said at a first conference that I was here, he said, that brother Rob and sister Sandpaper next to you are there to bring the promise of God out into your life, but yet you keep running away from them because they cause you so much friction. Those people in your life are caused, made and put there to cause you friction. So what's really of God will come forth. Even this family that we have here is put here to cause you friction. It may not be easy, but our job is to push one another. If you have something against me, come and say it. I'm not going to run away from you. This is our duty. This is how we birth this promise. Iron sharpens iron. Jesus. There's no hope for us. Remember, contemplate your own body. When Abraham entered into the land of promise, the land that was promised to him, when he looked around, he saw all these giants. He said, man, this is amazing. Look at all these things I have to overcome. But he kept looking at that promise within. He kept looking for that city whose builder and maker is God. He kept something off in the distance. Something from that unseen place. If you're okay being satisfied by what you see and what you do, you are sorely going to be deceived. But what you do on the outside will help rob that promise into fruition from the inside. The outside and the inside work together. It's a beautiful thing. Israel looked beyond hope. Man, all these tribes, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, all of them were there. And it was him and his men. But yet he looked. Where did he look? Where did he look? He said, God gave me a promise that if I went to a land, he would show me. Well, what did he show him? Even being in the land of promise, he showed him a city whose builder and maker is God. We know what that city looks like. It looks like me and you, fitly joined together. It looks like the apostles and the prophets. It looks like the 12 tribes of Jacob. It looks like myriads of angels. It looks like Elijah. It looks like the cherubim. It looks like the seraphim. It looks like all of these things. That's what he was looking for. That's what that promise is to get. All those tribulations and stress on your soul, every anxiety that you have is pushing you, pushing you saying, are you going to see? Are you going to open your eyes? Or are we just going to keep sticking our heads in the dirt acting like we're ostriches? God's wanting us to obey because he says there's something great in you. And I'm talking to myself because I'm just as scared as you guys. Mm. But he is able to raise the dead and bring something from nothing. He is able to bring something from nothing. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. I know I read it earlier, but it's important. And I wanted to read it. The whole thing. Mm. Started in verse 24. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. Notice that Paul is speaking. Hey, I'm suffering because of you. Get that. He's not suffering because of him. Just like Abraham wasn't suffering because of him. He was suffering because of the promise of the future generation. Your suffering isn't for you alone. Even though you'll be blessed, your suffering is for the future. It's for the people that you carry within your heart. Every mother should know this. Those pains of childbirth were some, some kind of suffering. Well, that suffering wasn't for fun and giggles for their lives. No, they had to push a baby out. So 
So I'm rejoicing in my suffering. And in my flesh I do not share on behalf, or I do share, I do my share on behalf of his body, which is the church, to fill up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. There's a mystery there. Of this church I was made a minister according to, to the stewardship from God, bestowed on me for your benefit, so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. That is the mystery which has been hidden from past ages and generations. But he has now been manifested to his saints. To him God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Glory. Abraham was the father of many nations because he saw the many nations in the city that is from above. He saw the city that is in the future. He saw you and me, the Germans, the Italians, the Jews, the Arabs, every one of us within that city. (coughs) And he welcomed it from afar. What are you welcoming from afar in your life? Or are you just looking At the step right in front of you. To be like Abraham. You have to look in that distance. That that thing from within you. That God has hidden in your deepest recesses of your being. Christ in you. That's been hidden. Has now come to light. And he's wanting to show you a city. Verse 11. By faith, even Sarah herself received ability to conceive beyond the proper time of life since she considered him faithful who had promised. Not only he was not able to conceive, but she also. Guys, this is the place that God is calling us to. To a place to bear bear forth something that totally looks impossible. Therefore, There was born even of one man, and him as good as dead at that, as many as descendants, as the stars of heaven in number, and innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. All these died in faith without receiving the promise. But having seen them, and having welcomed them from a distance, and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth, For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. I cannot get across to us enough that even if our church grows, even if Annie becomes a multi-million dollar recording artist, recording recording artist, even if we have perfect families in our lives, even if whatever it is, the promise that God has in your life, even if you become all these things, you look as if this world is still alien to you. Have that within your mind. To have true faith, you have to have true humility. True humility is looking at a situation, even though you know something and saying, I don't know anything. I need a new revelation. I need something else from someone else to speak into me at this point of time. If you think you know something, throw it out and say, I don't know anything. I don't know what it means to be a Christian. I don't know these things. Da, 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 da. Carlene has a great testimony. Maybe she'll share it one day with us hopefully she will about jesus going through that process because when you go through that process it puts you on bended knee back to jesus back to that original place where it was beyond you to birth your salvation whatever is beyond you to become partakers of the divine nature when it was beyond you God is beyond you. We know a thimble of God. A thimble of God. Probably less than a thimble. 
but we're welcoming something from afar. Make it clear. Make it clear. Who's it, who's it, who are you making it clear to? Who are you making it clear to? You're making it clear to yourself. You're making it clear to the people around you. You're making it clear to your family, your relatives, your job, whoever. You're saying, hey, I'm going on. I have decided to follow Jesus. Verse 15. And indeed, if they had been thinking of that country from which they went out, they would have... They would have had opportunity to return. It's important what you think on. It's important what you contemplate on. Because if you're thinking about your past, God's going to open up a door to go back to your past. And it will be comfortable and it will be good, but you will throw away part of your inheritance. Because God loves you to make a choice. Verse 16. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. You know, when I think about Father, and I see his smile bend upon my face when I go to him, it brings me so much joy. Because it's like I'm pleasing him. Because I keep going into that unknown place. Now it's not completely unknown because it's Christ in you. He's not going to totally drop you off in a black pit. Well, he may sometimes. But he's calling you. He's calling us. To a place where we're like Abraham, where we're in this land of promise, what God has promised you, a great job, a great family, great whatever, whatever it is, but you put yourself as an alien and you keep it in your mind because you're always looking for something better. You're looking for a better country, a heavenly one, one that is made up of pearls and sapphires and streets laid with gold who's fully alive even the walls of the city are alive full of heavenly beings full of brothers and sisters who have gone before you this is what you look look at and you welcome it how do you welcome something you open the door and you welcome it. You say, hey, come on in. I see you. Hey, come on into my life and be a part of my life. In every heavenly thing, anything about the promise, if you don't have any understanding, just open that door and welcome it in. Jesus, I welcome you in. I welcome the blood in. I welcome all my guardian angels in. I welcome all of these things around me in. Focus. God will lead you. God will be your shepherd. What did, what did the promise to Abraham say? I will show you. And he got to the land. And he looked upon the land. And he said, this will be your land for your descendants. He will be faithful to show you the land. But if you're stuck out in wherever you, Haran before, you're not going to see the land. Just like if I don't go out and make a sale, go to the hotel to try to sell the coffee, I'm never going to see a sale of the coffee at the hotel because I'm not there. That's the one Josh is encouraging me on. Get out there. You have to put yourself in that position. The righteous man falls seven times and gets up. He was righteous in the beginning. You're righteous 
As soon as you start that walk. As soon as you believe. Believe that God will show up to you. Believe that he is. Believe that you have the blood. Believe in the relationship. Start seeing the cross in your life daily. Before you and behind you. Then start looking for that heavenly city. Start looking for that heavenly city. Start looking for the angels. Start looking for the men in white linen. Start looking for the cloud of witness. Start looking for your fellow brother around you who is a part of that city. Start looking at your sister. Start looking those in the for your people who are supposed to walk walk with you in faith. Noah saved him and his whole household. Who's going to help you birth that promise for your life? Start looking for those things. Call them. Welcome them. Welcome them from afar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think, contemplate, believe about a greater country. For that is what God wants for our lives. Let the tribulations of the world, of the world around you surround you. Don't complain about it, but look them in the face. Grab them with both hands and say, I am an overcomer because Christ in me, the hope of glory. This is my destiny. This is your destiny. This is the beauty of who we are. You know what I wonder about? I wonder about all the, the saints who have gone before us. I wonder about Thomas going to India and preaching the gospel. I wonder about the other apostles. And I wonder about their lives. And I, <clears throat> I think, Lord, I really want to become a father of many nations. I really want to become who I'm supposed to be. I don't even know exactly what that is. But to dream big. God is calling us to dream big. Dream big. Look big. Expect big. Keep your eyes open. Stop letting your life waste away. Go for it. Look like an idiot. Look like a fool. Just like Noah. But keep your eyes and open them. And God will be with you as he's going to be with me, as he's going to be with all of us. And on that note, remember, both within and without, on the inside and on the outside. I want to finish with this scripture because I think it's the how we really be resolute in the most simplistic terms. And it's Psalm 51, 6. He desires us to know truth in the most inward parts, most inward region, and in secret to know wisdom. I'll leave you with this. Abraham's name begins with silence. It begins with the Aleph. If you don't know what to say, begin in silence. But then look to the house, the bait. Abraham. Aleph, bait. Then look to the resh, the head. Then behold, Jesus, right there, born of water and spirit. I want us to pray.